So we're uh, on YouTube again, and this is the House Healthcare Committee. It's Friday, March 12th, about 1230 after taking a break. Uh, we've been in the process of reviewing final uh, markup on House Bill 210, uh, which is the bill that addresses health disparities and uh, works working toward health equity. We have uh, invited uh, Susanna Davis, who is the Director of Racial Equity for the State of Vermont to join us and who is an integral part of the proposal that's in front of us, or she and her office. Uh, and so, yeah, so Susanna, we haven't had a chance to chat, but what I wanted to say was simply that um, we appreciated your input in our committee on a number of occasions now, but we have, we have crafted a proposal that I believe is consistent with what we last talked about and is uh, in fact works with your office and your position to help uh, move forward the idea of establishing an office of health equity. Um, and I, I think I've sent to you the most recent draft. Have you had a chance? Did, did you receive that? And have you had a chance to, to see that? I'm hoping. It is very likely that I did receive it, but unfortunately I didn't see it. I am losing oh. the battle against the inbox. Oh um, yeah, well, we can appreciate that greatly. Yeah, uh, I've just done a quick search for you and I don't see anything unread, but it might have come from somewhere else. Okay, well then, oh dear, my apologies. Come from Katie or from Colleen, if you're looking for an inbox name. It should have come from me. Uh, yesterday afternoon. Got it. I think I see that. Yep, I do. Apologies well, I, for not getting to that before today. No, well, believe me, we're, <laughs> we're all operating in a similar sphere of many things coming at us and deadlines ahead of us, right ahead of us. So Can well, I let's suggest go ahead, Ian. I was just gonna suggest that Katie would be the quickest to be able to point to exactly the yeah. section of the bill that is most relevant. I would welcome Katie for you to do that. And that would help orient both uh, Susanna to the bill where it's involving her and her office. Sure. Do you no, want me to put it up on the screen or just direct you to where the language is? We're, we're looking in section three of the bill. Um, and that, let's see, my document has been marked up by today's changes, but around page um, 14, section 252, Health Equity Advisory Commission. I think I might like to leave it to Susanna, you and Katie to walk through and identify the key places uh, and it, let us listen while you're getting the opportunity to be reoriented as to what we had talked about or what this bill now proposes. So I think another key part is under the powers and duties of the commission. But Katie, mm -hmm. why don't you can help guide us. Guide, guide, sure. Guide um, so in, so in section- Susanna take the lead on that, whatever works best oh. for you, Susanna. I've just gotten up to C, to sub C now, powers and duties. Okay. Does it help if I kind of give you an overview as you read through? Yes, please. Okay, so- um, C1 looks at um, kind of the short-term duties of the commission with regard to providing recommendations and guidance for setting up an office of health equity, um, making recommendations on structure responsibilities and jurisdiction. Um, and then there are specifics that um, require recommendations, including whether the office will be independent how it will be staffed, the population served and issues addressed, duties of the office, how grant funds will be managed and distributed and the time frame, and necessary steps to establish the office. From there in subdivision two, it's the duty of the commission 
to provide invite advice and make recommendations to the office once it's established. And there's a list of what the commission would provide advice on to the office once there is an office. And then um, subdivisions three, four, and five in this subsection A um, would be ongoing responsibilities of the commission. So in three and four are, were in the bill as introduced. So you probably um, mm -hmm. had read through those at one point, but reviewing, monitoring, and advising all state agencies regarding the impact of current and emerging state policies, procedures, practices, laws, and rules. And then in four, identifying and examining the limitations and problems associated with existing laws, rules, programs, and services um, related to the health status of um, the communities identified. And then there's a new responsibility in five, which is providing um, advice and recommendations on um, cultural competency and anti-racism within the healthcare system through training and continuing education requirements. Um, this has assistance in subsection D, assistance for the commission coming from the agency of administration and this has an annual reporting requirement. The committee has contemplated language here um, that the recommendations of the advisory commission would be based on data, data collected and analyzed pursuant to the next section. Um, it has um, your position, executive director of racial equity, um, calling the first meeting of the commission to occur on or before September 1, September 1, 2021. Um, and then I think the other language has remained the same in this section. And then there's also language in section uh, 253, data responsive to the health equity inquiry. Um, and the language here talks about each, um, state entity that's collecting health health related data to collect um, disaggregated data by race, ethnicity, gender, identity, age, primary language, socioeconomic status, disability, and sexual orientation. Um, and it also says that um, data related to race and ethnicity is to um, shall use separate collection categories beyond, disaggregated beyond the categories of non-white and white. And this is to be based on recommendations made by the executive director of racial equity in consultation with the advisory commission. Um, and then I'm gonna skip down to section four. This um, is existing law that lays out the duties of the executive director of racial equity. And this adds a new subdivision four that um, says that another duty of the executive director is temporarily overseeing and chairing the Health Equity Advisory Commission until an Office of Health Equity is established. And then in section five of the bill, this is um, a one-time report that the Health Equity Advisory Commission is going to do by October 1st of 2022 with regard to making recommendations for improving cultural competency and anti-racism and Vermont's healthcare system through initial training, continuing education requirements and investments. And then in um, section six, it's a two-part section, but in this fiscal year, 180,000 is appropriated to the agency of administration from the general fund for use uh, by the executive director of racial equity in carrying out the provisions of this act. And then in subsection B, there's legislative language that a similar appropriation will be made, need to be made in future fiscal years until the Office of Health Equity is established. And that's it for the bill. The last section is effective date. I'm wondering, thank you very much for that. Um, it was very, very useful. And looking through it for the most part, um, it looks very comprehensive. I'm wondering if the per diem section can be updated. I, I recognize that there had been a change from the bill as introduced um, that raises the cap on 
pay um, per diems from three meetings annually. Actually, it does more than that. It calls for more than three meetings and raises the cap on per diems for those meetings to six meetings annually. And I'm wondering if we can just make that something to the effect of um, for as many meetings as the stated funding permits. I, I feel strongly that asking people, especially the, the listed people, the 28 listed people, many of whom are people of color and are leaders um, in the community who are often asked to do this kind of labor for little or no um, remuneration. And, and I, I feel strongly that giving every opportunity that we can to fairly compensate for this work might be as simple as saying, until the money runs out or something like that. Thank you for flagging that. That's actually on my list uh, of something that I wanted us to still tend to because we had talked about, and I think you actually had used the phrase process equity, which made a big impact on my thinking. Uh, and when I didn't realize until quite looking at it uh, again, that the number had been changed, but it still had a stated number of meetings. Um, and uh, I, would, I would personally support uh, some language to the effect, uh, some, some find some other language that allows for the commission to determine within the funds appropriated to uh, determine how often to meet. And- um, Thank you for consideration. So I think, I think we should, and that, I have lots of circles around that right now, so. Uh, I think that, that's an important uh, change. Are you chairing no representative Lippert uh, representative Goldman has a question for uh, Susanna. Okay. Uh, well, first I want to ask Susanna before we take any questions as to whether you have other uh, thoughts or suggestions based on the opportunity that w that you've just had to review this, but uh, knowing there may be others. I'm going to say for for right now, no, I'm, I'm happy to take a representative question just while I let this mm -hmm. sink in a okay. little bit. Yep, that sounds good. Uh, Representative Goldman, then Representative Chena. Um, we talked about remuneration for, well, no, we didn't talk about it, but we talked about creating work groups within the um, commission and wondering about remuneration for people doing work group um, commitments. And I would like to include that in some way. Um, so I don't know if it has to be specific or not. Yeah, thank you for that. That was kind of, um, that was going along with, with that thinking was, um, are the six meetings just of the larger group or of the subcommittees included? Is it six per person annually? Um, and, and if we have to bring in outside experts or what have you, um, you know, how does all that factor in? So those are, those are certainly open questions that I think are, are worth considering here. Thank you for raising that. Can I ask my question now? Go for it. It looks like Bill might have froze. Oh no, you no. moved. Okay. No, I, moved. I, <laughs> no I, I was just I was just wanting to step in and say that I'm supposed to present at one o'clock to the appropriations committee on the financial end of this. And I wanted to just share what my thinking was. I had some conversation with Suzanne at a previous point in time, but um, but to suggest that the that there be a consulting that, that there be funds for hiring a temporary, not a permanent position, but temporary either per person or persons or a consulting uh, group or some somebody to assist uh, under the direction of Susanna and was thinking in terms of um, tying that to $140,000 at that level, perhaps then an additional uh, ten dollars to $20,000 of administrative and other expenses that would be used to perhaps uh, bring in uh, other expert consultants, et cetera, and then another $20,000 for per diem. For, for per diem use within the, uh, but I would see that as both within the commission as well as the work group, sub work groups. And then 
we, we haven't, it's not all calculated out exactly to a dollar specific dollar amount, but I think uh, I'm going to make that recommendation to the appropriations committee within the range of $180,000. Hopefully that can accommodate some of what's being, what we're talking about here. Um, can I ask my question now? And they will, they will have other questions that I probably won't have all the answers to. Uh, sure. I don't know. Again, Suzanne, I don't know if that's, I mean, that, I think that's pretty consistent with what we, we had talked about somewhat previously. Is that? Yeah. Okay. Brian. Um, so I just, you know, you mentioned um, in your testimony today um, that very, it's very common for impacted people, especially BIPOC to be asked to do extra work and not compensated. And I feel like in your role that's happened where we hired, you know, we hired a, um, a director of racial equity and then gave a massive amount of work to that position. Um, uh, and we, there's, there is talk of expanding the work of the director and giving the director an office and more support. And, um, you know, in this bill, we modified it to hand a piece of that work to the office of racial equity director, you know, to set this up. And I guess I just want, before we move forward with it, I haven't heard you express any objection. Um, I just wanted to give you a chance to weigh in on that specifically and just make sure that if, you, if, if we're gonna give the position of the director of racial equity this work, that we're also giving the proper support, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of funding, staff, et cetera. So I don't know if there's anything you need to say or want to say about that, but I wanted to make sure I asked before I voted on this. Thank you, Representative. Um, the work has to be done and I'm here. So we got to get it done. I mean, I, it, it is a lot. I don't pretend, um, I don't pretend that one person or three people can uh, necessarily balance everything that needs to be done in and for Vermont. But um, one, thing that I, one thing that I can say I'm relieved about this year and seeing the aftermath of the pandemic is that oftentimes when we face crises or budget shortfall, one of the first things to get cut is equity work. And uh, I think this year, I'm, I'm very pleased to say that we have a legislature and an executive administration that have demonstrated the opposite, that we're looking to expand this work because we can't recover unless we're recovering equitably. And so it's not an ancillary part, it's a necessary part. So uh, all that said, I, I um, am grateful for the trust that you all are putting in, in the racial equity office for this work. And um, we're, we're gonna do the best that we can. I'm sorry if that was a strange non-answer, but. Yeah. I, I'm hearing from you that you are, you're, you're welcoming the work and you see it as part of the overall goal of your office. And I guess the only thing I would encourage is that when you need the financial help, um, don't be afraid to ask because we will advocate for it. I can't speak for everyone, but I, I would advocate for it, you know, because I wanna make sure that we're properly funding the work too, so. Can, can, I, step, can I step in and say, and I'm speaking, I'm speaking on behalf of our, our committee now, because when we sent our budget recommendations to the appropriations committee, we said, uh, we said we wanted to fund this temporary work that at the time had a place saver in of $100,000. But we also said that that was contingent on the full funding of the two additional positions in your office. That if, we, if the, that we, your office cannot take this on, from our point of view, those were essential. That was essential initial work that the Appropriations Committee had to do in order for us to be able to consider taking this next step and asking you to take on this additional transitional responsibility. So we as a committee, and I will reiterate that uh, in the appropriations committee today as well, that the funding of those two additional permanent positions is a necessary prerequisite to moving forward with our proposal for this office of health equity transition work. So 
I welcome any further thoughts. Um, and I'll just, maybe I'll just cut to the chase. I think you've said this, Susanna, but it's like when we were, when we were going over this yesterday, uh, the question was raised, has the Office of Racial Equity agreed that if we are successful in this, that they are interested and willing to take this on? And I said, well, let's, let's have that straight up discussion because it had been referred to and implied in some ways uh, when you visited with us previously, but today is the, I hear you saying, I believe I hear you saying that you would, uh, you would uh, support taking on this additional work, presuming that your office has the other support that it's, uh, that's intended as well. Yes, and if I may, I might just add one thing to that um, that I've hesitated to say until now, but mm -hmm. it's Friday, I'm feeling bold. Um, I, would say, I would say yes, um, I, I, would, I would welcome the opportunity, but I would ask, uh, the, I would ask the committee and, and the legislature and I guess the state in general to be uh, prepared slash understanding in the event that the timelines might need to shift. Yeah. I, I, think, I think we are ready for the stage where we want to get it right more than we just want to get it done fast. And I, I respect that our, the rulemaking process generally does rely heavily on deadlines and timelines. But I would also just put a note in here that it's very possible that we may ask for those to shift. And, and I'm going to thank you all in advance for, for the understanding and the flexibility in that. Uh, I appreciate you saying that. And, uh, and I, I mean, I, we haven't had this particular discussion, but it, that would be consistent, I believe, with the uh, intent of our committee to have the work done right. And uh, not just to meet an artificial deadline, but using, but we would be, tr we would be, we would be trusting on the collective judgment of your office and the commission members to advise us as to what that, what that, what the uh, practical implications of that are so that we could work together on that. Thank you. Okay. Well, actually the timing is actually fortuitous. Uh, because um, I'm being asked to come to appropriations in a few minutes. Uh, and um, you don't get to eat, but the rest of us want a lunch break. Well, that's good for everybody, I suppose. <laughs> but actually my question was whether I, I was, uh, uh, yeah, okay. Well, that's, that, I, I think that's, that, that's the place for us to stop right now then. And, um, so I will maybe maybe Susanna, could you stay on video just for a minute and let me check in with you as others are leaving to get their lunch? And I'm, I'm welcoming you to go get your lunch, but I, I'd like to just touch base with you a minute more before I leave the screen, if I can. Yeah, can okay. we just verify when we're coming back? Uh, uh, two thirty. Two thirty. Come back at two thirty. Thank okay. you. Okay, great. Thank you for all your work this morning. And I want to actually, before you go, I want to thank Representative Donahue for uh, t stepping in and helping to facilitate the committee this morning. I, I really appreciate that, uh, Representative Donahue, and, uh, and uh, that was greatly appreciated by me. Katie, I'm going to crop you a quick email just okay. so you know it's coming. Great. Oh, and oh, oh, let me say, so we need to integrate language uh, uh, in that uh, compensation section on page 18 or so, whatever that number is, uh, that uh, revises page what? 19, page page 19, 19. Item H, I believe, compensation and reimbursement. Yeah, H, yeah. We must not forget that in order to be consistent with what our conversation just has taken place with, uh, with Susanna as the Director of Racial Equity. Okay. <laughs>